and welcome back to Game Escape. Here today with another installment in my collections uh, series that I started with the PlayStation 2 uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to take a look at the PSP, a system that I picked up fairly late in its life cycle. I got it in 2010, and at that point I had been away from handheld gaming for a long, long time, really since the days of the original Game Boy. Um, back, and uh, you can see here, this is a uh, special edition uh, the Gran Turismo um, PSP, which uh, I just saw on the shelf one day and was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot, because, you know, back in the day, I kind of played handheld games when I couldn't use the family television. And... Uh, or, you know, when you were on a trip or something like that. So to me, it was always a substitute for the real thing. And as I kind of grew up and got my own TV and my own, uh, you know, and my own AV equipment and my own house and stuff like that, you know, I had no need for portable gaming. But like I said, I picked this up on a whim and I was really, really impressed um, with its quality at the time, although I wish it had a second... Uh, second analog stick, but that's okay. And uh, around 2010, you know, the catalog had been really established for it, uh, and I was really thrilled to see that there were a lot of JRPGs on the system. So uh, this collection is a lot smaller than my uh, PlayStation 2 collection, and a lot more focused on JRPGs. So if you're into that, uh, and you want to see what's out there for the PSP, at least what I picked up, um, we'll get started right now. First up is Tactics Ogre, and uh, this is, I guess, a spin-off of Final Fantasy Tactics. It is a wonderful game. If you love um, SRPGs, tactical kind of battle games in the, in the spirit of, I guess, the original, obviously, Final Fantasy Tactics, I'm trying to think of that game on the uh, so Sakura, so the Sakura War series, which which I kind of liked as a um, strategy RPG. This game is a really, really fun, um, a very, very challenging game. So highly, highly recommend this. Great, great pr production value. It's one of my favorite Square Enix games in a long, long time. Next up, we have Trails in the Sky. And this is a game by... Uh, Falcom, and it is really, really uh, a gorgeous. I believe it, it started its life uh, on the PC. I may be wrong about that. I know the series probably dates back to the original PC Engine, but I think this particular game was a PC-only game that they then ported over um, to the PSP. And I actually have as well the special edition, and uh, picked up the or limited edition. I picked up this. Uh, limited edition and never had a chance to get into it and then I saw the regular edition for $15 on Amazon so I picked that up. Haven't had a lot of time to get into it but from the little I've played just an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous RPG so I'll be looking forward to getting into this a little bit in the future. Uh, Star Ocean 2nd edition, sorry about that, Star Ocean 2nd edition um, Still sealed, haven't got to it yet, but um, played the, the first game, and I'll talk about that when I get to it here in the pile. Also still sealed, uh, the third birthday. I guess this is, um, it's kind of hard to see, another installment in the Parasite Eve series, which uh, I actually liked on the PlayStation 1. I only played the first one, but it was one of those games that I think really stood out back in the day. I know a lot of people didn't like this, but one day I'll crack it open and get into it. Final Fantasy uh, VII Crisis Core. Uh, this game is actually a lot of fun. It's um, more of an action RPG, and it has this almost uh, slot machine or pachinko machines power-up system. It's, it's been a while since I've played it, but those of you who have played it alone, I'm, I'm talking about uh, that kind of gives you different abilities in, in boss battles. Um, the story's okay, and it was just kind of fun to go back to the Final Fantasy VII universe and play as uh, 
one of the uh, the Shinra officers. So uh, this is typically considered to be one of the, the must plays on the PSP, and I would agree with that. Kingdom Hearts. Uh, this I have not opened because I haven't actually finished the series on the PS2, but hopefully we'll get to that at some point. Uh, here we have Mahjong Fight Club, and this is one of the, I think, first releases for the system. This is the Konami's best version, of, has all the players from the professional Mahjong League. You guys know I'm a big fan of Mahjong. Uh, it was a pretty good game, played it for a while, however, the one on the, the I guess, second edition, or the Vita edition, is so much better than this in every conceivable way that I haven't picked it up in a long time. But, you know, for a couple of bucks, if you like Mahjong, not a bad game. Original Final Fantasy. Uh, this uh, original Final Fantasy 1 remake um, brought back a lot of memories. Obviously, I think if you're truly, you know, a hardcore, nostalgic Final Fantasy player, you want to play the original NES version. But this game, but you know, this was a really, really, um, I thought, you know, nicely done remake, and I got it for under ten dollars, so uh, definitely worth it. Now you're going to see me do some Ease games. I've got two here. Uh, Ease 1 and 2 Chronicles and Ease 7. Uh, we'll grab the other one here. I also have um, Oath and Felgana, and these are all sealed because uh, I picked these up with the intent of just sort of going through all the Ease games on the PSP. But then I saw that uh, at least Chronicles and Oath and Felgana were available on Steam, on a Steam sale. I got them for just a couple of bucks each, so I started playing this one on Steam, and then I decided to pick up the Turbo Graphics version because I just wanted to play that, you know, classic, um, you know, 16-bit or well, whatever the Turbo Graphics was, 8-bit, 16-bit game, and, and get the original music. So I just uh, won't be opening these. I guess that's good. I'll keep them sealed, and then eventually. Uh, I'll get to 7, because I do not believe 7 was released on Steam, so uh, Ease Games for the PSP. Uh, another special edition here, Persona 2, Innocent Sin, I guess this is the... There were two Persona 2 variants released on the PlayStation 1. Um, I actually enjoyed this. Uh, it's very, very old school. I think a lot of people criticized it because you know, it just felt so archaic when you compared it to uh, RPGs released uh, from, you know, whatever, 2005 onward, but uh, but I really liked it, I like that classic style, and, uh, you know, this limited edition was, again, you get, I was able to get PSP limited editions pretty cheap on Amazon, you know, after they've been out for a while, so this was definitely a good pickup. All right, um, Initial D, Street Stage. Uh, really, really like the manga and the anime. And I was really hyped for this game on the PS3. There was a PS3 version which was Extreme Stage. I actually have a review up on that here on the channel. And in that review, I pointed out how uh, this, uh, this game is just very difficult to control. And it's really the case here on the PSP as well. I mean, it seems like every turn is a drift, and um, I just haven't, you know, I haven't figured it out. I just haven't figured out how to play it. Uh, you know, to me, it just the drifting mechanic is so different from any other racing game that I've played. It's it's really really off-putting. It's a shame because this is uh, kind of the spiritual successor to games like um, like Outrun or Sega Rally. Those you know classic Sega, you know, uh, Daytona USA, classic Sega racing games, but. I don't know, there's just, the, the controls are just so, so difficult. And the original Persona. Um, this is a game that I had never played, and when I saw it on the PSP, needed to pick it up. Uh, very, very good, kind of like that first-person perspective. Great, great music, uh, this edition, so I was really happy to have that. And another Persona game. Uh, Persona 3 Portable. Uh, this was the game that got me into the series on the PlayStation 2, and I thought, well, uh, you know, just gonna grab it for the PSP, relive those memories someday. I haven't 
opened it yet. I think the, there was some new content you could play as a female character in this, but, um, you know, love this game on the PlayStation 2. And Final Fantasy 2, I have not uh, played this. this. This one is still uh, shrink-wrapped, of course. Uh, you know, I've played this game on other platforms, but again, it was one of those kind of Amazon deals, 10 bucks or under, so I had to pick it up. Uh, Blazing Souls uh, Acolyte. Uh, this is a strategy RPG that I uh, read some good things about, haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but, again, it was fairly, fairly uh, cheap on Amazon, and like I said, seems to be uh, pretty good, so if I delve into it, I'll let you guys know. Fantasy Golf, Pangya, um, Korean golf game, which is surprisingly uh, addictive. I, I remember picking this up on the PC. It was actually a free PC game, and I guess it was it was one of the earlier free-to-play games. It had a, a marketplace, and you can go and upgrade your character, but really, really simple, clean graphics. Uh, if you like, you know, the, uh, the Mario golf games, uh, I think this will really appeal to you. I never really got into the whole, you know, buying clothes for my character and stuff like that, but at, at its heart, it is just a really, really good... Um, pick up and play golf game. So, highly recommended. Very, very cheap. Mega Man Powered Up. This is kind of a chibi style version of Mega Man 1 with uh, some different gameplay options. Uh, just as challenging as the original. I don't know. I mean, there are so many other better uh, Mega Man kind of retro collection games out there. I don't know that uh, this was necessarily worth its own game. Maybe if they sort of did this style with 1 and 2 and then released 3 and 4 or something like that, you know, maybe that would be worth it. But, you know, not bad. Uh, still happy to have it in the collection. One of my favorite games of all time. This is uh, Umehare Kawase Portable. I think one of the best platform puzzle games ever. And I've got a review of it up on the channel if you want to check it out. Love this game on the Super Famicom. Uh, the Super Famicom game is, is very, very expensive, so I picked this up for 20 or 30 bucks, and it's just well worth it. If you have never played uh, Umihara Kawase, definitely you owe it to yourself to try it, even if it's just like a ROM of the Super Famicom game. It is so, so good. And uh, Wipeout Pulse. Wipeout Pulse. This game uh, came pretty highly uh, recommended as, as kind of being a graphical showpiece for the PSP. Um, you know, it's okay. I, I still feel that, I don't know, I, it, it's, to, to me this plays better with a controller, and I was never a huge fan of the Wipeout series to begin with. I know that might be kind of sacrilege if, if you're a racing game player, but, um, you know, it's certainly not bad, and... Uh, was fairly cheap, so definitely, uh, you know, something to add to your collection if you find it, but I wasn't a huge fan. <laughs>